you may feel like you've never, you're never doing enough, but in reality, you're always doing your best, aren't you? Yeah, I don't know, Frey. I don't know. I can't tell if you're trying to encourage or discourage. During the first year of high school, we go on a school trip. I don't have anyone to make promises about sitting together with, so right now, I'm left with three choices. A. Sitting with a teacher. <laughs> B. Sitting with one of the class bullies. C. Approaching Mr. Fennel who happens to have a seat open near him. Well, I feel like C. Ah, uh, C. Is the obvious choice. I decide that the latter is the lesser evil. Mind if I sit here? Not at all. Thanks. Oh, now that I think of it, it's the front seat. I shouldn't be taking it. You can just change with someone if they get carsick. I, for one, can't sit in the back. I always get dizzy. Oh, me too. I used to get really bad motion car motion sickness. Sucks to be you. Vincent laughs dryly. His laughter doesn't reach his eyes. Crap. I just messed up my second and formal conversation with him. By the time I gather myself again, Vincent's long since asleep. Dude, he's got one of those pillow things. His head is bumping against the bus window in small intervals. I bring out my MP3 player, but minutes later, Everyone decides to watch an action movie. The loud sound doesn't seem to bother Vincent, who's sleeping with earplugs. I should have brought some too. Ah, dude, you should always bring earphones. In the end, I settle on watching the movie and lose the track of time. By the time we arrive at the hotel, it's past midnight. I get a room with three guys who don't mind me ditching them during the night. Success. At best, they'll get drunk and play cards in someone else's room until sunrise. And at worst, one of them brought drugs. Maybe both. We get up the stairs and unlock our room. It was a bed and a shower, so it was perfect. My classmates leave the room as soon as they finish unpacking. As expected, they don't bother inviting me anywhere. Dude, these are some real mean kids. <laughs> Glad they know I hate having fun. Yeah, I know, hate having fun. Hate hang hanging out with friends. I spent half of the night sketching ideas for comics I might draw someday. All of them feel like I've seen them before. In the morning, I admit the light of freshness. I like being up early. The hotel dining room is dead silent like a cemetery. Out of my classmates, only some girls and Vincent are present. I decide to drop into the seat near him. Morning. Good morning. I didn't see you last night. I was getting my beauty sleep. Dude, what is wrong with your hands? Are those acne? Man, she wasn't kidding when you said your acne is really bad. Did you party with everyone? Of course. Have to admit, I have a hard time imagining you drinking. Why? I have high alcohol tolerance. Unlike many. Ugh, don't remind me. I woke up to sounds of someone puking in the toilet next door. Uh, unpleasant, isn't it? My face says it all. Still, the image of Vincent downing alcohol like a glass of juice seems really funny to me, so I can't help but laugh out loud. Vincent gives me a questioning look so I quickly try to change the topic before he asks anything. When I drink, I just become sleepy. Boring, right? <laughs> Is that so? I thought you'd be the type to talk a lot. Nah, if anything, I shut up for good. Then fall asleep. I think I'm the type people would call an ambulance for because they drunkenly did I think I died of lethal ethanol intake. You sound like you speak from experience. Well, maybe it is from experience. <laughs> the trip itself is nothing special. Art museums never interested me much. During one of the excursions, Arietta gets lost, and I volunteer to look for her. Thankfully, I spot her at the statue near the museum with a dead phone. Arietta doesn't let go of my shirt until we get back to the group. The night at the hotel on our way back doesn't go as smoothly as the first one. This time, I have to share a room with a guy who doesn't mind other people seeing him make out with his girlfriend right in the room. Yeah, I know. What the hell, people? No PDA. I do, so I grab my jacket and make my escape. It's already past curfew. Probably not the best idea to spend the night on the hotel stairs, but whatever. Just as I start to doze off, someone shakes my shoulder. Lur- <laughs> Lur- <laughs> Eiler. You'll catch a cold if you sleep here. It's Vincent. Ah, uh, thanks. I didn't mean to fall asleep. Why are you out at this hour? Just wanted to get some fresh air. I do enjoy night walks. We're not allowed to leave the rooms at night, you know, <laughs> says the person that left the room at night. Then, may I ask why you're here? Uh, I guess I'm not a fan of voyeurism? <laughs> no, that sounded bad. Forget it. <laughs> okay. 
I'm guessing there are problems with your roommate? Yeah, they're making out with their girlfriend in the room. Yeah, that's a pleasant way to put it. I could use less pretty words, but it leave a bad taste in my mouth. Vincent looks at the night sky. It's nice here. So quiet. I don't have to wake up to shouting. I don't know what to say to that. So I just pick at my skin. Oh, dude, that's why your hands are like that? That's gross. Sorry, I said too much. No, that's... Fine? Pitiful? Awful? None of these seem to fit. I'm not someone who should comment. We sit in silence for some time. That being said, do you plan to return to your room? Nah, I'll wait it out a bit more. I see. Well, good night then. Night. Thanks for keeping me company. It's my pleasure. Half an hour later, I return to my room, only to find my classmate sleeping soundly. This asshole. I fall asleep thinking that it would be nice to go somewhere with my class again. Passwords, ooh ooh ooh. One incoming message from Vincent. Would you mind joining me for lunch? Sure, just gonna grab something to eat. Is it the usual place? Yes. I'll be going ahead then. Vincent likes to eat outside. It's more quiet here, he says. After the class trip, we've started hanging out more often. Sometimes he invites me for lunch, like today. Don't you think the educational education system is flawed? Yeah, it's very flawed. Vincent brings a hand to his chin, thoughtful. Depends on what you define as a flaw. If the main objective of education is discipline, then it is essential to have a hierarchy. Hmm. I'm rather thinking about the things we learn. Take today's test for example. Do you actually know what the entropy of isolated systems never decreases means? Can you explain that? Uh, actually I don't even know. <laughs> but entropy is always increasing so it can't decrease, right? No, not really. I just learned the material needed to answer the questions. See? You only learned the answer the teacher wanted to see. Not only will you forget this knowledge, but you'll have no clue what you're writing about. We're only learning keywords that we don't know the meaning of, and don't gain any practical knowledge. Okay, I understand where you're coming from. If you can't find use for theoretical knowledge, then it's meaningless, right? However, I wouldn't use this statement as an excuse to slack off, or accuse people of using bad teaching methods for that matter. Right. I just wanted to hear you- wait, I just want you to hear me out on this. If given the opportunity, I'd like to change something myself. It'd be ridiculous to tell others how to do their work. I'm relieved you understand. I think it's not just the education system that uses keywords though. Words that carry no meaning litter our speech in everyday life. Then, mass media is just entirely made out of them. It's just template phrases that are guaranteed to cause a reaction. I mean, you're right, but... <laughs> well, the hidden objective may be entirely different. Yeah, like articles bashing local art exhibi exhibitions are actually written to promote them. That's kind of true, actually. It's called controversy. Controversy. Oh crap, I think that break will end soon. You still haven't finished your food. Haha, <laughs> don't worry about me. We hurriedly finish our modest lunch and run to class. Puberty, oh my god. The older we get, the more disturbed and obnoxious everyone becomes. They're trying to connect, clumsily, erratically, which I understand to some degree, but I've always been fine in my own company. Also Vincent's, but he can be tiring too. Sometimes he starts ranting on subjects I don't understand, which gets tedious. Like how do I give a damn about politics? Go back to your containment board for god's sake. Harrietta isn't a saint either. Am I actually masochistic for enjoying being bad-mouthed by her? At least she has the same horrible taste in anime, okay? Miss Warhol, you absolutely have to consult me on dating sims. Dude, what? How we randomly go to this topic? We could make a fortune off this. Fuck off, Eiler. It won't sell. Here, at least. And don't talk so loudly. The other girls were here. It's your fault for trying to seem- What? For trying to seem something you're not. So how about it? You and me, a doge circle? No, I've never written a finished story in my life. Just copy the popular tropes. Everyone only wants things they're used to. Just go away, Eiler. You're a bother. Go pester someone else. Talking to Miss Warhol always lifts up my mood. Have you heard of Heaven's Gate? It's the name of this game. 
They're an organization that preaches that our world is controlled by alien puppeteers from another world. Oh, finally, stuff from the other uh, realm. <laughs> puppeteers. Wait, Heaven's Gate organization? Is this actually canon? <laughs> Pu alien puppeteers from another world. I mean, the alien puppeteers, well, they're not alien puppeteers, but the puppeteers were from the true realm. Fucked up, right? Does that mean that the world is more real than ours? What even is real these days? Do you think we could be saved if we refuse to be actors on the stage? Maybe we should leave altogether. One incoming message from Charles. What's up with the emergence of web cults lately? <laughs> it's convenient, dude. Is that what you mean? You mean Heaven's Gate? Actually, I helped copyright the contest for the site. Wow, Vincent. Way to make that cash. Eh, what? Really? Of course. Any kind of content has curators. This one was meant as a prank, though. You don't actually believe that we're puppets on strings, do you? The text you wrote was awfully convincing, though. <laughs> I'm bored. I mean, I'm honored. <laughs> Why Heaven's Gate, though? We wanted it to seem big despite it being a prank. Doesn't it sound like something promising? Yeah, it sounds pretentious as fuck. It doesn't mean anything, really. They swear so much in this ch true realm. Did they swear this much in the other world? This really is the true world. Just like Heavenly Kingdom doesn't exist. So, an empty promise of virtue, huh? Still, isn't it, uh, kinda dangerous? People might believe you guys for real. That would be silly, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, you never know. People believe anything these days. Interlude rationality. Oh my god, it's Bennett! Okay, so we're getting these interludes that are like in the false realm or something? Mr. Honecker, do you think I'd act more rational if I killed my remaining emotions? I don't believe we could be rational without feelings. Patients with prefrontal cortex brain damage cannot experience emotions. To them, any decision seems as good as the other. For example, when I think of killing someone I care about, I'm overwhelmed with horror. It goes without saying that I never do it on a whim. Thus, feelings are essential for rational thinking. Soap inhibits the prefrontal cortex functionality as a side effect, right? Yeah, Bennett, stop taking all that soap. I've been saying it all the time, but consuming it isn't doing you any good. You lose the ability to distinguish the weight of one decision from another. And that means... That means killing me and eating the cookies for breakfast will be morally equal to you. Yeah, sounds about right. Hmm. My point is... Killing your emotions will only worsen your overall mental state. It's okay to care, Bennett. Bennett croaks out a laugh. Also, guys, I think there's blood in the background there. <laughs> what is this? I feel like the background images are like vaguely real life pictures, so it just looks very unsettling. Vincent peeks over my shoulder, startling me with his voice. Are you writing something? <sighs> this barely counts as writing. Fedo steps over the bench. Now facing me directly. Are you dissatisfied with what you're making? No, not exactly. Not more than usual. It's just... I don't know how to communicate my thoughts to others. The whole plot looks too contrived. I stopped reading after the first page. Hmm. Do you think your readers are stupid? No. If anything, it's my own fault that I'm a clumsy writer, not theirs. Then, do you not trust them? I don't. I mean... I really want to, but I'd be lying if I said I did. I see. If you can't bring it around no matter what, why not prove that you yourself can be trusted? Vincent leans closer into my personal space, making me recoil a bit. Show that you've done your research. That you're knowledgeable about the subjects you're handling. That you're involved as much as your reader is. That you're prepared to bear your mind and soul. His presence suddenly overbearing, Vincent looms over me. My breathing hitches. I feel small. Wouldn't I be making a fool out of myself if I admit my weaknesses? Yes, it'll make you vulnerable. It'll leave you in the open. Naked in public. Guts out. Come, cop a few. For a <laughs> dollar ninety-nine only. It's the, that is literally the price of this game. Drilling, right? You... Yet still, you'll be the one in control. Because it was your conscious decision to reveal the information, and you hold power over it. With those words, 
Vincent leaves my personal bubble and drops on a bench beside me. Having nothing to hide puts you at both an advantage and disadvantage, but my opinion is that it's worth it. <sighs> I suppose that's one way to go about it. If it were me, I'd rather have the work exist separately from its author. If anything, I prefer working as anonymously as possible. Yes, I'm not saying my approach would work for each and every person. You should choose what suits you both, I mean suits you best. But most importantly, don't underestimate your readers. Make them feel like your story is the best thing they'll ever experience. Make them feel like they can only feel that way with you. And there you have it. A story you can be proud of. <laughs> the way you put it sounds like sell your mind to others. <laughs> Does it? I call it sharing. Besides, being insincere in your work will result in flavorless throwaway texts. Do you want to write disposable garbage like that? Mr. Fennel, you're intense. That's a lot of knowledge for someone as young as you, Mr. Fennel. I'm just saying what I've learned from more experienced writers. And I suppose I'm really passionate about writing. Oh, I didn't know. Is he writing something too? You just look like you need advice. Were the words I chose enough? Yeah, thanks. I owe you one. Actually, would you like to read what I've written so far? I think I could use some feedback. Sure. Don't expect mercy. Bring it on. I'll fetch you my notebook next week then. There's a lot written, so you can take your time with it. Our conversation is cut off by the ringing school bell. During our final high school year, Vincent joins the student council and invites me to do the same. Didn't you mention that you wanted to influence the school life if possible? I believe it's a good opportunity to do so. I think it's not about good ideas, but rather the ability to convince others, which is something you have. And right now I'm using it to convince you to try it. Ugh, so persistent. Okay, fine, I'll tag along. Success. You'll definitely regret it. <laughs> what the? Huh? Wait, that's the opposite of words of encouragement. <laughs> it's past 6 p.m. We're one of the last students leaving school. I stretch and allow myself to let out a prolonged yawn. Today's meeting was so tiring. I need a no people day soon. Ta, <laughs> me too, dude. Hmm, I can understand that. Says Vincent who talked during the whole meeting. <laughs> what the hell, Vincent? How do you even have energy for all that arguing? <laughs> I just enjoy good discussion. More like uncivilized discourse. Everyone's basically trying to shout louder than the others. Thrilling, isn't it? I can't believe you. I'm joking. It was indeed a bit tiring. I'm not a big fan of the noise. However, I don't feel like going home just yet. Well, the weather's not bad. I was planning to invite you for a walk anyway. Alright. Should we walk in silence for a while? Good plan. I let my vision lose focus and, can feel, the, and feel the world around me slow down. We parted ways after an hour of strolling around the park. Feeling re-energized, I spend the whole evening leisurely studying subjects ahead of the program. Social media. We're waiting for the next class to start. Henrietta sits near me on the windowsill, dozing off with a chem textbook in her hands. I'm so tired of social media. <laughs> Everyone's talking so much, but there's no one, but no one's talking about things that really matter. Dude, Charles, are you me? And I feel bad for contributing. Arietta yawns and stretches, then pinches my nose. What do you think people should be talking about then, genius? And who are you to decide what matters and what doesn't? Shut it, I know. I'm just saying how I feel. And I feel tired. Your judgments are useless then. It's like wanting a teenage melodrama to have a deeper meaning. Want something profound? Read a book. Or go talk to Fennel. He's like a combination of a therapist and a saint, so no wonder you love that. Way to trivialize, trivialize him. He's like a god. Yeah, there's so many references to like the other world. I don't know what's going on. A human. You're just biased because he validates you. Okay, good point. Still, I don't get it. What's so good about him? Aren't you singing him praises just because he's polite? Vincent is literally the god of Charles' world. Just because he has the human decency to make effort to be kind to others, he's hardworking. Reliable, and after talking to him, I always feel like I've ascended to some new level of human consciousness. Also, he appreciates the concept of personal space, unlike some. Ugh, are you done yet? Now you're just being jealous. Go fuck yourself, Eiler. See? No human decency. Vincent would be like, 
Would you kindly back off? <laughs> Would you kindly fuck off? That's the same thing. <laughs> Might as well be. I wonder if he ever gotten if if he's ever gotten angry at someone. He just has high self control. I lost mine somewhere along the way when I tried to prove that I'm not a doormat for others to step on. Ah, uh, so she's cautious about her attitude after all. Me and Amri is the best Amri. I mean, it's the only Amri that we can't have. Remember blackmail Amri? Good times. Actually, any Amri is great. I can't exactly tell you not to worry about it though, but I like you the way you are. Okay, 